Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians. We rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to do that. And we also give out the gospel message, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died, buried, and rose from the dead as the Messiah, the Christ. And he came to lay down his life and shed his blood for the remission to forgive you for past, present, future sins. And it's not of works, lest any man can boast. You don't add anything to it. That's why he said on the cross, it is finished. And it's important to accept that salvation. It's a free gift in this church age. I'm going to cover today a interesting story, a lesson. Hopefully you find it. It's of Esau and Jacob. And we're going to take a look at the verses and also see what we can learn from that. So we see... In the Bible, the story of Jacob and Esau. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said unto Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint there. For was his name called Edom? That's Genesis 25, 29 through 30 that I just read there. Jacob was in the kitchen, you know, he's cooking, and Esau's out working in the field. And of course, Esau comes in, he's hungry. And Esau means red, and Edom also means red. So there at the, the end of that verse. And he was not called the, you know, red because of his hair. It was rather the texture of his skin was red. So just a little side note, it's a physical appearance. And, and Edom was attached to the man because of his carnal desire. And he had a carnal desire, in this case, to fulfill his needs of hunger. Just so you know, the Edomite people are red people in the Bible, and Esau is not only his name, it is his identifying characteristic. So he's a descendant from that line by natural birth. Yes, Esau has Edomite distinctions. So, And Jacob said in Genesis 25, 31, sell me this day thy birthright. So we see a, we see a price. We see a bartering price for, for the, the pottage. And essentially, this would be an agreement or a covenant. Genesis twenty-five thirty-two. the Bible reads, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? So you have an issue here, and you have, you have a proposal, and then you have an agreement. His thought was, I'm going to die. What, what good is the birthright? But he, you're not thinking, he's not thinking about his inheritance, his promise. He's not thinking about not sinning against God. He's, not, he's thinking about his carnal nature. And we know the importance of, of this birthright because Isaac, their, the miracle son, inherits the promise of Abraham. Where it says clearly in the Bible that, this, that, the, that, the, that the seed of Abraham would what? Become as stars that you couldn't number or as sand on the seashore that you can't count. And wow, what a blessing he gave up for a simple bowl of pottage. Genesis 25, 33 through 34 reads, And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore, swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. There's the key. Esau despised what God had promised him. Imagine that. Imagine being a Christian saved today and despising the fact that, that you're saved. Despising the fact that you are a Christian, that you have a relationship with the Lord. Many people do that. Let's not despise our birthright as a son of God, as a Christian. Yes, this is an Old Testament passage, but it has a spiritual application for us today. You know, what good are future rewards is what Esau says. His flesh needed something now. How many times do we say that in our Christian walk? That, you know, the future rewards are not worth the sacrifices of today, the service of the Lord of today. You know, the idea is, why should I be concerned about gifts from God that I, that I can't have now? In this day and age, it's everything, everybody wants gratification. Everybody wants everything now. You know, it's why you have cell phones and text messages. You want it now. You don't want to wait. 
It's why people have microwaves to instantly zap their food to, to get it done quicker. It doesn't taste as good, but you get it now. We're a culture of now. Esau represents this culture. So if we look at Esau in Genesis 26, at verses 34 and 35, and Esau was 40 years old when he took the wife, took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. So Esau went out from his own people, out of his lineage, outside the family line, married two women of another race, which God didn't want, all because he despised God and the birthright he was given. Once again, he puts his desires of the flesh ahead of the Lord, ahead of what he was supposed to do. So you could argue that Esau, well, he didn't, he didn't really get out to a great start, right? Genesis 27, 1 through 2 reads, And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, in other words, look, here I am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. So Isaac sent his son out to get him some venison in Genesis 27. So Esau goes hunting, and Jacob and Rebekah desire to deceive Isaac and steal the blessing away from Esau. That's how this went down. Genesis 27, 30 to 32, And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from hunting, his hunting, and he had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto him, His father, let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thou soul may be blessed, may bless me. And, I, and Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. So there's the lie. Isaac can't see who it is. It was Jacob pretending to be Esau. Sometime later, you've got to imagine Esau comes back in from hunting. But Isaac had already given the blessing to Jacob. The patriarchal blessing and, this, and the curse could not be reversed. Genesis 27, 33-34, And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to it me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he said, he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. We know who did it. It was Isaac who deceived him. So Esau cries out loud. He knows the blessing is gone. There was a bitterness in his heart. And you can, you can note here that Esau was weeping over the loss of the blessing, not over the sin of loving his, his stomach more than Jesus or not over marrying outside of the lineage, which he wasn't supposed to do. The sins against the Lord. And, and that's, a, that's the lesson here. Our, in our life, when we struggle, in our life, when we lose things, in our life, we want to take the easy way out. We want to go into the world, and then bad things happen as a result. We weep over the loss. We don't weep over the sin. We, true repentance is weeping over the, the sin, the actual sin against the Lord. He saw lost his blessing, and he was upset about that. And this is a crucial point in this study and something you can learn in your life. You sin against God, you don't, you don't mourn the loss that you have. You know, we live in a world where there's going to be loss. There's going to be ups and downs. You're going to be put through trials and tribulations and pain and, and health issues and death of loved ones and watching people turn away from the Lord and, and backbiting and lying. Yes, do I wish we didn't live in this world? Yes, but every day we live here. And we can serve the Lord, we can focus on Him, or we can mourn the things that we lose in life that are temporal and not mourn that we sinned against God. Words of the wise, God bless and have a great day.